Welcome to the House Strategy Built. This is a presentation that I developed because I think it's important for us to really understand what strategy is and how we can use it to move our organizations and teams forward. So let's start with a definition. Strategy is a plan of action that defines how an organization will use its resources. Now, in this definition, it's primarily talking to uh, for-profit uh, entities. But I think one of the important things from our perspective in the government or in nonprofits is, is adding this idea of adding public value, right? Um, it's important to understand that strategy is, a, is about choices. It's about focus areas and, and how we use initiatives to move things forward. It's also about trade-offs, right, and priorities. We can't do everything that we want, so we need a way to really make sure that, that the impact that we're having is the best it can be. So strategy has four domains. Strategic vision, which helps answer the question where we're going. The strategic thinking, uh, what we do today to influence tomorrow. The execution, or how we're going to get there. And then the mission alignment, or why this all matters. Strategic planning is leadership. Leadership is strategy and planning together. I like to define it as the process that sets specific goals, identifies those steps for success, right? Uh, that definition, I believe, is actually from the um, work that will be cited later in this presentation, but it's a good definition. Leadership at its essence is about vision, right? Where are we going? Where do we need to be? How do we get there? And most importantly, why it matters, right? As Peter Sangay in the Fifth Discipline says, it's an exhilarating piece of vision that really propels people forward. It gives them the understanding, the why and the how, and helps people show them where they fit into the organization and where things are going. Strategic logic is the idea that you have different variables that need to be addressed in strategy. First of all, the situation. You need to talk about the context and the challenge. You need to talk about the outcomes, which is the desired effect or impact, where we're actually going. The objectives help make sure that we know how we're getting to those different outcomes, right? What, what are those milestones? The means are the time, the resources, the people, the knowledge, the information, uh, all the resources that need uh, to be utilized and the capabilities that have to be developed in order to get there. Obviously, we have to act. We have to use those resources in a well-meaning, con concerted effort, collaboration in order to make that, that happen. And of course, we have the trade-offs, the constraints, all the risks that, that need to be addressed along the way. The strategic logic cloud, I think, illustrates this very well, right? So the situation is, is that context, there are constraints, there are parameters, there are problems, there are different conditions. Uh, assumptions and interests are always really interesting because I think we don't pay enough attention to those in surfacing them and really get getting stakeholder buy-in and surfacing the assumptions uh, that we often take for granted. Threats and opportunities need to be addressed. And of course, we have in the middle the outcomes, the actions, the means, and the objectives. Strategic thinking is defined in the Harvard Business Review's guide as analyzing opportunities and problems from a broad perspective, 
and understanding the potential impact that the actions may have on the future. So the components of strategic thinking are lifting yourself above the daily work, as Ron Heifetz and his colleagues talk about getting on the balcony, um, considering the larger environment, what is the system and the context uh, that you need to understand, asking key questions, challenging assumptions, both your own and others, gathering complex and sometimes contradictory data, interpreting and analyzing that data from multiple streams, and making choices and actions that actually drive the results that you're looking for. Some of the th six strategic thinking competencies are the criticality. How are you thinking about how you think, right? That metacognition piece that we often talk about in, in the research. There are creativity questions. You know, how do we really approach an issue in a new, innovative, nonlinear way that allows us to really think through that in a different perspective? Using concepts to help develop those theoretical frameworks or models so that we can show people and guide them and help them to understand what it is that they're looking at. We want to work collaboratively with others so that we can get their buy-in, get their ideas, get their understanding, um, and see what the, the potential risks and limitations are. We also wanna obviously be communicating, right? Strategy is leadership, leadership is communication. We need to actively perceive what issues are out there and have the ability to listen and, and, and ultimately influence others. So what makes up a really good mindset for strategic thinking? How do we develop those skills? What are they? And then where are your gaps in those potential skills? Being curious? being consistent, but, but being agile as well, having a focus on the future and kind of the external environment as well, being open to new ideas, looking at things from a scope and a breadth that's above where uh, things are at right now, seeing patterns, making connections, doing the analysis is really helpful. And then, of course, the questioning. We, we've talked about that questioning piece, really uh, both assumptions and your own thinking, as well as gathering the data. Again, we've talked about these. Um, this is that idea, right? We have so many things that need to be done and we need to drive results, right? How do we how do we think about the future in a way that makes it happen? So what are strategic or objectives, right? What are the objectives that the organization needs to uh, meet? What are the needs, the challenges, the mission, the opportunities, the priorities? Similarly, where does the team work in that? Uh, team fits into the larger organization. What are the priorities for the group and how do they align with the vision and the mission of the, or, the larger organization? And of course, what is our individual, our self role, right? How do we uh, provide that support for, for the objectives and the needs, right? All three of those must be in a line uh, in order to make the most effective outcome. So we talk about zooming out, right? Thinking about getting up uh, at an elevated position, being able to see down, see around things like context. What are the stakeholders? Um, does this further the goal? Um, that's obviously a typo. Um, what else is available? Um, what's on the horizon? What are the issues? What are the... Um, is this the right mission even, right? Or, or, or do we need to actually pivot 
and transform ourselves based on where we have come from and where we're going. So I'm going to talk briefly about thinking in systems because this is really important. Uh, I, there's a whole nother presentation that I'm going to do on thinking in systems, but um, you know, we are all a system. So we ourselves, our bodies are literally a natural system. Uh, there's a lot of systems out in the uh, natural world, the environment, um, but also thinking of teams as a system, divisions or organizations, agencies, um, but also society, right? There's an interconnectedness um, that's really important. This is a brief summary of system thinking and the skills that you need for those. We'll get into more of these as we move on um, and, and in that other presentation, but I wanted to, to have you see it here because I think it's really important to start thinking about this uh, in a holistic way and developing these skills. So dynamic thinking, systems as a cause, forest thinking, operational thinking, the closed loop thinking, quantitative thinking, and then scientific thinking. These are all parts of the systems thinking process. So we've talked about being able to zoom out, but we also need to, to zoom in and understand that there are going to be key details in the execution that really drive whether or not these can be successful, right? And that's part of the piece of systems thinking that I think some people tend to miss is very small changes actually can have very major out, out, outputs or, or really kind of um, drive where things go. So we need to pay attention to some of those, not in a micromanagement uh, fashion, but but more in a understanding is, is how will this affect uh, the people? How will this affect the other things that happen? So these questions can be really helpful for that. All right, so we've spent 10 minutes kind of leading up to this, but but this is the, the key, the strategy house. So strategy house is a, is a model that I developed that basically brings into focus all of the key elements that I believe that you need to develop a strategic approach to whatever the challenge it is. So this is, again, it's a house. Think about it as a foundation, as walls, a roof, and then external things that, that need to be addressed. So we're going to address this primarily from the idea of a police department or a law enforcement agency, because uh, that's the, the context that I'm in. But it can be, I think, um, widely applied to pretty much anything. So we'll go through it all. So it starts with that strong foundation. First, understanding all of these key things, especially the vision, right? What is ultimately driving uh, the change that where we need to go? What is that destination? What is that end state? What is that future state that we need to get to as, as a department, as an agency, as a team? You want to think about it too in terms of behavior and what gets done. Um, in, and also in terms of rewards, right? What gets rewarded? Uh, because generally what gets rewarded is what is done. So there's that piece of it. Values, beliefs, worldview, and traditions are also really important here in understanding where we've come from, the history, um, all of the, the things that go into that are really important. Next, the first wall, the outer wall. So you notice the two outer walls kind of have a different color. That's purposeful because remember we have to have, if this is a house, we have to have those exterior walls. The strategic direction, very similar to the vision, 
is really important for defining or redefining where we're going. Having that proactive approach and tells the, the team and groups why, um, what is our purpose, and then how we're actually going to move in that direction. This quote from Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, I think is, is critical here, right? If you don't know uh, where you want to go, it doesn't matter which, which path you take. You want to know where you're going because it does matter which path you take, because that is going to be uh, hopefully the path of least resistance, the path of most value, the path that gets you there fastest uh, and does what it is that you need to do so that you can serve uh, the public, serve your, your clients or customers, stakeholders, etc. The second outer wall is communication, right? Credibility is the absolute foundation for leadership. We have to have a good message. We have to deliver it in a way that actually makes sense and people are going to buy into. Communication is leadership. Leadership is influence. Leadership is about selling the direction that we're going, listening to people, engaging them, and making sure that uh, it's it's properly reinforced. You have to do it multiple times. It has to be consistent. It has to be authentic. And it has to be done in a way that people find credible. Then you want to start looking at the performance objectives, right? We talk uh, uh, very often about goal setting as using a smart uh, framework. A specific, measurable, attainable, reasonable, and timely. Um, I like the ER, smarter. Let's make it smarter. Um, it also has to be ethical, right? Let's make sure that we're doing the right thing and reportable. We want to make sure that it is, uh, we have a mechanism to share where we are uh, because that helps. That really is an important way of showing how we're making progress. Um, it's also that accountability mechanism. We talked about the rewards, right? And, and people do what they believe will be rewarded. Similarly here, we measure what matters, right? And that is, is really critical. Next, we move to the activities and initiatives, right? These are all the things that happen uh, in moving the objective, the strategic direction forward, and it helps the execution, right? These are different experiments, they're different initiatives, they're different activities that ensure that the strategic direction is moving forward. Um, they can be internally focused, they can be externally focused, um, but again, it's, it's all about what is happening um, in making that piece go forward. We can't do anything if we don't understand the resources, the limitations, and the risks, right? What is the problem if we don't have the budget? What is the challenge if we can't uh, meet our objectives? What happens if uh, the right people are not sitting in the right bus? What if they don't have the skills, right? Uh, it's going to take longer. Um, are there controls that we can help mitigate some of these risks? Are there, um, is there a willingness to take more on um, and, and be able to do this, right? These are all good questions. And again, the whole purpose of Strategy House is to give you a framework to have these conversations in a way that, that helps you plan and and identify these issues. The two external factors that really need to be considered and I think special attention needs to be paid are stakeholder relationships and community expectations. We, I kind of look at this in terms of the, the small p political and the big p political, right? These, especially in government agencies, are really fascinating. We have internal and external stakeholders. Uh, we have governance and issues. 
we have dealing with internal stakeholders who really have a lot to go on here. We also have communities that are really looking for leadership and uh, can be very influenced by the larger national media coverage, the, the debates over all kinds of things. Um, they have the community expectations, right? It's a political, uh, for example, police departments, government agencies are by their nature um, an animal of politics, right? Elected politics, uh, governance, it is, um, right? And, and that's the democracy that we live in. So we have to have broad participation. We have to be making sure that people have an understanding and a sense of ownership and commitment. And hopefully these questions, right? Who are the stakeholders? What are their needs? What are their concerns? And then how they're impacted all feed into the larger um, conversation and the strategic direction. The roof are the people, right? We can't get anything done without people. Law enforcement is a people business. Government is a people business. Anything is a people business. We need to make sure that we have recruitment, retention, professional development, and training opportunities. All of the things that, that enable the, the direction of the organization to go in, in where we need it to be. We want to make sure that those pieces are aligned. And obviously, that's there's a lot to to uh, go into that. But again, it's it's getting the right people, making sure they're in the right seats, making sure they have the right skills, making sure that they have the right opportunities and that those are available for as many people as possible. So this goes back to kind of the stakeholders and the expectations. And I think it's important just to understand and put it in a, in a graphic, right? That strategy plans and efforts really fundamentally come down from the very top. Uh, that is that, that piece, um, the expectations, the community and the citizenry through their elected officials onto the department. Uh, the, the chief or the assistant chief and, and the command staff help set that direction and then it flows down, right? Each uh, division, command, unit, whatever, however it's divided, subdivided, can have strategies, plans, and effort. They all need to flow up and be in alignment with the broader department and, and community vision. And it's also really important, and I think this second arrow that goes up is lost sometimes feedback ideas and performance right flow up as well and and as leaders in an organization we need to solicit those feedback feedback even when they're negative or even when they don't align with what we are hoping we need to listen to them the the ideas uh the innovation the the, the what's working what's not working all can be uh moved up and then, of course, you have performance. Performance, the actual uh, measurement and, and how it's going, uh, all flow up. So the strategy development process, so using Strategy House and, and that model, now we want to move into the strategy development process itself. So it's assessment, it's drafting, refining, publishing, monitoring, and then adapting. And it's a continual process. So assessment, again, uh, very similar questions. Where have we been? Where are we going? Uh, what What is out there? What are the pestle issues, right? Political, economic, societal, technology, legal, and environmental issues that we need to be aware of? And who needs to be involved? We want to look at the people, the culture, the process and the systems of our organizations because those fundamentally show whether or not we can uh, get there because those are the key infrastructure if you will to build strategy house drafting and refining is is that first big step and the question is how do you 
how do you do it? Um, I recently talked to an agency who was going to have an offsite strategic re retreat for their command staff. And one of the questions I asked was, are they going to be wearing their uniforms? And the reason that I asked that was, if they're wearing their uniforms, then the naturally people are going to gravitate towards the rank on the collar, right? The brass. In a strategic planning session, especially in an internal one, we want to make sure that everybody is empowered to speak in a way that is uh, constructive and gives everyone an equal footing in developing this. Um, so this agency did that. They actually mandated no uniforms uh, coming to the, uh, to the retreat. The name tags were all first name only, and that way it was all in a circle, so there was no head of the table or anything. Um, and then that way it, it gave them the ability to really have that um, clarity that they needed uh, to really focus on the discussions. Sometimes you may need to bring in an external uh, facilitator to, to help do that. Doing if then planning is really helpful as well in this phase because you want to really identify what contingencies could occur. Um, these are goals, sub goals, actions, and triggers. And, and then you can do that in a way that helps people really uh, observe what's gonna happen. This is an example. So the goal, is to provide quality training designed to increase individual and organizational development. The sub goal is to ensure that all officers receive a consistent level of high uh, quality training. So the first action is to develop a comprehensive um, annual training plan. The triggers for that action are if it's August 15, right, the training sergeant needs to begin creating the plan that will ultimately be published by November 1st. The second action is to review and revise the training policy. Here the trigger is if the training policy is over three years old, then it needs to be reviewed and ultimately either revised or republished within 30 days. So this framework kind of helps standardize and make sure that the strategy is actually able to be implemented and really uh, thinks through what needs to be done. So once you've gotten it, stakeholders have gotten the buy-in, you want to publish it, monitor it. How is it being publicized? What is the internal messaging, right? That's really important. Are there dashboards uh, to be able to help monitor and, and show people what our progress is? Are you doing quarterly strategic reviews and, and really revisiting it? And are you incorporating it into the performance evaluations or performance plans of all, all employees? So I'm going to emphasize all employees because every single person in the organization has a fundamental role in implementing and executing the strategy. adapt, right? Things change. There are uh, things that happen. Um, we get in, we start looking at it and we're like, okay, wait a minute, that's actually not going to work um, for a variety of reasons. So now if we change those metrics, they can be refined, added, modified, or deleted, but it's important for both our historical understanding and for the transparency to just say, hey, listen, this is why we are doing that. This is why it's changing. This is a living plan. It doesn't just sit on a shelf gathering dust or, you know, be posted on a website. This needs to be part of everything we do. All of our messaging absolutely needs to come back to this piece of understanding what our strategy is, why it matters, where we're going, what your role in it is. That's that's that has to be constantly messaged. 
So I want to give this example. This is this is from Charleston, South Carolina. This is their mission and, and vision and value statement. And I thought it's really important. Now, personally, th to me, this is a little bit uh, long for their mission and their vision. Um, I, I like to see vision broken out a little bit more, but, but it's still really good. And I still think that it, it really is a great uh, way to un understand it. Um, the core values, the heart analogy or the heart uh, acronym is really nice, right? It really um, brings things together in a way that, that people can connect with. So this is from their strategic plan. So I want to kind of showcase just one piece of uh, this from their, from their investigation portion. So their goal is to reduce crime victimization, thoroughly investigating major crime, serious incidents, uh, acquire, identify offenders, acquire evidence, and, and prevent reoccurrence. They give a rationale, which I think is really helpful and kind of underscores what it is that they do. And then they have the objectives and the measures. So I hope this has been really helpful and I hope that you've enjoyed this. Um, here's the resources that I used that, that hopefully will be helpful in, in putting this together. Um, the strategy house was, was mine and uh, I hope you're able to use it. Let me know, provide feedback if you have any uh, comments or suggestions. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Be safe.